special thanks to Patreon supporter Transfighter8 for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare204 here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building the Yakov Yak-38M. The Yak-38M, known by the NATO reporting name as Frogger, was a Soviet naval aviation's only operational VTOL strike fighter aircraft in addition to being its first operational carrier-based fixed-wing aircraft. It was developed specifically for and served almost exclusively on the Kiev-class aircraft carriers. The VTOL itself first uh, was introduced in 1976 and was later retired in 1991. Uh, in total, 231 were built and um, that's pretty much about it. So very interesting little aircraft here. It doesn't really have a huge service history or wrap um, just due to the time it served. There really wasn't too many conflicts going on and plus the Soviet Navy not really being much of a you know, large scale Navy as compared to like the United States or something like that. So it doesn't have like any crazy extensive, um, you know, history to it, but it is pretty cool being a kind of first VTOL type aircraft used by the uh, Soviet uh, military. And uh, I guess even you can say uh, somewhat Russian, but uh, really cool stuff and a really interesting aircraft. Um, it's basically the equivalent of the Harrier. So, I mean, that's really what you can compare this down to, uh, but pretty cool aircraft and should be a really fun tutorial to uh, go ahead and do. Um, now, before we go and take a look at the build, I want to go ahead and give special links to Patreon supporter Trench Federate for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you guys already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go and pledge a small amount to the channel every month. And in doing so, earn a VIA request to your choosing, depending on which tier you sub to. Really helps support me and the work I do on my channel, and um, it's obviously very much appreciated. So, again, feel free to check it out. Again, links always in my video descriptions. Anyways, let's go ahead and kind of dive into taking a look here at the. Um, Yak 38M, and kind of see what we're doing doing here. Um, this is the Yak 38M, so this is the most modernized version um, of the aircraft. So uh, again, just throw it out there for reference. But there really isn't too many big differences between the uh, Yaks as they kind of progress, considering that they were really only in service for uh, a little over uh, 15 years. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into it. Um, so. To kind of begin with, uh, we have obviously the landed and in-flight version. The landed version here, I do also have the doors open, which would expose the um, engines here for basically the thrust. Um, so it has two uh, basically up here, and then it also has uh, two here on the bottom located directly beneath it. So if I remember correctly, um, these here are basically the intakes. So it takes the air in, uh, shoots in the engines, and then it gets the producer's thrust there. And there's also these engines back here, which can also rotate and face downwards. Um, but as you can see, we have it kind of down them in this formation because I really couldn't find a really nice way to do it. I mean, you guys can mess with it, try to find something cool that would work for this area. But um, yeah, so these engines would actually be able to tilt 90 degrees and face downwards like so. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much that. So you do have the option of having it kind of with the vents open to actually have a VTOL if you want to. Uh, the color scheme we went with is the pretty typical... Uh, one that the Soviet Navy was using. Um, so it's basically the blue top, uh, white tip on the tail, and it also has a green underbelly. So I really do like the Soviet camouflages. They're always cool on their aircraft, that's for sure. Um, so that's cool. Uh, on the side here, it also seems that it was very common to have the Soviet Navy flag on the side. Um, pretty large too, I'm not sure the reason why um, on this aircraft in particular, but try to recreate it here with banners. It looks all right if you <laughs> look at the actual thing. Uh, not too bad of a design. Uh, we then have uh, basically the aircraft number there, and that's pretty much it for um, that. Armis on the wings here, some uh, rocket pods and some air-to-air -air missiles and all that stuff, so nothing too crazy. And um, yeah, so that's that, and we also have the in-flight version of the aircraft as well, so you will be able to have uh, basically both options available to you and pick whichever one that you want to have uh, suited to your needs. Anyways, really cool aircraft, uh, kind of our first... Uh, I guess Soviet's uh, naval aircraft, but uh, anyways, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. All right, guys, going ahead and moving into our tutorial, we're going ahead and starting off with our first layer, layer two. Now we're starting with layer two because it gives us a better basis to kind of build off of and basically build the um, aircraft from. So layer two is going to kind of give us a better idea of the overall size, and it'll be easier just to add on the other layers to this layer. Um, one thing I want to mention also is if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, we will be doing both the landed and in-flight versions along with the VTOL capability or the VTOL, uh, you know, 
uh, basically option. Um, if you are wanting to build those, those will be add-ons that will be saved for the end of the tutorial. So we're going to build it as if it's in flight, completely standard, and then we're going to go ahead and basically modify it to make the landing gear and uh, the uh, VTOL uh, openings and all that stuff. So to go ahead and get started to make sure that if you want to build this landing, you're building, basically building it correctly, we want to make sure that this layer here is going to be a three, total of three blocks off the ground in total. So you can see we have three blocks of full space between the ground level here and basically the start of this layer two. Very important to make sure. If you do plan on having this thing VTOL maybe partially taken off or in the process of it, uh, then you can have this, uh, you know, however high off the ground uh, you want and, you know, just know that. But this is the very minimum amount of sp space uh, that you need to have the landing gear actually fit. So, uh, very important. Again, make sure that that's correct if you do want to have this landed. If you're in flight, obviously you don't have to worry about that too much. Anyways, let's go and get started. So. If you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to start these tutorials, I like to do half on camera, half off. What this means is since this aircraft is for the most part completely symmetrical, we're going to build the center line. And then, as you can see, the left side's already built. We're going to build the right side, and it'll be up to you guys to take the right side and copy it over to the left side. Same thing on both sides, nothing too crazy, so just, you know, pay close attention and you should be good to go. Anyways, let's get started with our center line. To begin with, we're going to place down a quartz slab. Again, if you're building this landing, make sure it's three blocks total, uh, three blocks of space between that and the ground. We're going to go ahead and place down a end rod, come off this slab pro at the front. We're going to go then use the warp stair, place down a warp stair, followed by one and two blue concrete blocks back from that warp stair. We're going to go and then switch to green terracotta, and we're going to place down a long row of green terracotta, which in total is going to be 20 blocks long from that blue concrete block. So we have 20 green terracotta blocks back, followed by a dark oak with upstairs stair, two dark oak with top slabs, and a dark oak with trap door come off the top slab like so. That right there is going to make your center line for the aircraft. Go ahead and move into the sides now. Uh, we're going to go and place down a skeleton skull on the side of the stair, followed by one and two prismarine walls back. We're going to go ahead and then place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six blue concrete blocks, followed by a black concrete block, and then one, two, three blue concrete blocks. All right, guys, so after this row of six of blue concrete, we're going to go ahead and then take our green terracotta, place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven green terracotta block blocks back, followed by a black concrete block. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone button here on this black or green block, followed by the side and also the bottom here of it. We then want to take dark oak trapdoors coming down from this button. We're going to place down a dark oak trapdoor here and then a trapdoor on the side of the button, which we're going to close like so to kind of form our engines here on the back. We then want to place down a dark oak trapdoor coming off the stair, followed by a dark oak top slab and a dark oak trapdoor after that for the back there. And that's going to be our first line over here to the uh, off side of the center. So make sure that this line here is going to be transferred over down the air side, kind of mirrored over. Once we get to this point, we're going to go and then grab ourselves a quartz stair. We're going to be using smooth quartz also. We're going to place this down next to the second blue concrete block right here from last. So quartz stair like so. And we want to go and then grab ourselves a warp stair again. And we're going to place down a warp stair which will be on basically the sides here of this stair like that. Now we're coming off this warp stair, uh, we want to go ahead and grab ourselves an item frame and we're going to have black concrete. We're going to place down an item frame here on the side of the stair and we also want to go ahead and place down an item frame here on the bottom of the stair. We're going to place down black concrete on both, uh, in both item frames and we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves a dark oak wood sign and we're going to place down a dark record sign over the side of the stair as well. So same thing here to both sides. Once we uh, get to this point, we're going to go ahead and then place down a black concrete block, followed by one, two, three blue uh, concrete blocks. We're going to go ahead and place down three green terracotta blocks, and then one, two, three, four upside down dark oak stairs. When we get to this point here, we're going to go and then grab our dark oak trap doors. We're going to go and go to the second green terracotta block here. We're going to place down a dark oak trap door coming off the side of it, followed by a second, third, fourth, and fifth one back. So you have a row of five there. For our pylons, uh, we want to go and place down a polished andesite stair, which should be coming off the second trap door from the front. We're going to go and then place down two andesite walls back, and then a dark oak wood trap door on the end there. We're going to go to the side of this dark oak wood. Uh, or the side of this andesite wall, we're going to place down a dark oak trap door, followed by four back, so one, two, three, four, save a row of five. We're going to go ahead and go to the second dark oak trap door again, and we're going to place down a polished andesite stair coming off of it, just like we did before, and then two andesite walls back from it. We then want to place down a dark oak with a top slab coming off that andesite wall in the end there. 
We're going to go ahead and then place down a dark liquid trapdoor come off the side of this inside wall here. And then we're going to place down one and two uh, top slabs of dark liquid going back, followed by a end rod on the very end of that uh, last slab on the end there. And with that all complete there, that is going to basically wrap up what we have here for our first layer, layer two. Here's what it should look like from up above, and as you can see, we get a nice basic design here set up for the aircraft so far. And uh, with that, we're going to go and drop down to layer one, which will basically consist of putting a little bit of stuff on our under belly of the fuselage and then putting our um, armaments onto the wings. Anyways, let's go ahead and move into layer number one. Alright guys, so before we go and dive into layer one, a few quick details I want to add on for this uh, previous layer is I do want to go ahead and place down a stone button here on the side of this blue concrete block. That's going to be the same on both sides there. And we also want to go and go back to this first green terracotta block here on the side right before the wings start. We're going to place down an item frame and a yellow stained glass pane. Rotate around to kind of form a diamond shape there in the item frame like so. And again, that's going to be the same thing there on both sides. So just go ahead and make those quick additions and we're pretty much good to go for that. Anyways, go ahead and move it into layer one to begin with. We're going to be going ahead and grab a dark liquid uh, trap door. We're going to go ahead and go to the first blue, con or, uh, yeah, blue concrete block. We're going to place down a dark liquid trap door on the bottom of it. We then want to go ahead and go back with our dark liquid trap doors. A long row in total. Uh, we want it to be 18 back. So it's going to be in total a row of 19. So we have 19, 19 dark liquid trap doors <clears throat> going back from this section all the way back to this point right here. So it ends right before the middle point here between these two um, thrusters here. Once that's done, we're going to then place down a dark liquid trap door to the side on the last one here, followed by one, two, three dark liquid slabs forward, then one dark liquid trap door, then three dark liquid top slabs, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven uh, dark liquid trap doors going forward like so. Uh, once we have that done, we also want to go ahead and go to this section here, and on the bottom of this black concrete block, we're going to place down a dark liquid trap door to both sides as well. Now once we have that done, uh, we want to go and then move into our armaments. So our armaments here, we're going to need some gray concrete, some wither skeleton skulls, dark liquid signs, um, some uh, dark liquid fence gates, and we're also going to need a oak wood trap door, and this is going to be our, for our first pod here. Now uh, this first pod here is a multiple kind of missile launcher, um, so for this we're going to go ahead and place down a gray concrete block on the bottom of this inside wall, and then we're going to go forward one, two, and three blocks. We're going to go ahead and place down a wither skeleton skull on the tip there, and then a oak wood trap door on the back here, and have it closed like so. On both sides of this uh, gray concrete block, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak wood uh, fence gate to both sides and open it up toward the block, and then we're going to place down two dark oak wood signs going forward. And same thing over here as well, like so. And after we have that done, that's going to do it for our first pod. And then we have our kind of air-to-air -air missile here on the side. So for this, we're going to go and grab a skeleton school, smooth cord slab, smooth cord stair, a stone button, a iron bar, and also an item frame. And for this design here, uh, we want to go and start off by going ahead and going to this pylon on the outer wings. We're going to place down a smooth cords upside down stair, followed by one, two, three, uh, smooth quartz uh, top slabs going forward. We're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull on this slab here on the front and then a skeleton skull to both sides of the stair on the back here. Coming off the back of the stair, we're going to place down a stone button, item frame, and then an iron bar in the item frame, like so. And with that all done, uh, that's going to basically finish that off. And the last thing we need to do here is to grab ourselves a daylight detector. We're going to place down a daylight detector here on top of this quartz top slab and turn it to night mode, like so. And that'll be the same thing there on both sides. And once we have that done, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer one. So we have our armaments put onto the aircraft and basically everything good to go for that. Anyways, that's it for layer one. Or let's go ahead and move on to layer number three. All right, guys, going ahead and moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. Now for layer three, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down an air brick slab on top of this block just like so. After we have that done, we want to go ahead and place down an air brick stair back from the slab, followed by a blue concrete block. This right here is where you do have the option. If you do want to add an interior to this aircraft, you're perfectly uh, able to. Uh, we do have this space of four that's marked out for an interior. So you can go ahead and leave a space of four open and build your interior inside this section. Or you can go ahead and just fill it in like I do with some black concrete. You really don't get too much space to work with just due to the nature and the design of the aircraft. So just want to, you know, again, give you guys the option. So you can either fill this with a space of four or just leave a space of four open and add an interior later. Anyways, after that space of four, we're going to place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 
uh, blue concrete blocks back. We're going to then place down one, two, and three green terracotta blocks, a polished andesite block, and then a polished andesite top slam from the very end, and that's going to form our center line. Once that's done, we're going to then place down a skeleton skull on top of this prismarine wall at a slight angle, like so. We're going to go ahead and then place down a warp stair back, followed by two warp stairs directly after it. Now at this point right here, we do have a difference in the two sides. Coming off this skeleton skull on the right side, we're going to place down a skeleton skull like this, and then an end rod coming off like that toward the front. This is going to be on the right side of the aircraft and the right side only. Um, if you do not want, do not want to include this, um, you don't really have to, it's a little detail, uh, but if you do, uh, to, you know, get all those little details, then to basically make sure it's just on the right side. So I would recommend building the left side to about this point here, and then putting this on just so that you know the difference in both sides there. But, uh, that's how the nose should look like, um, from that point. Anyways, after this warp stair, we're going to then place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 blue concrete blocks back. We're going to go then place down a green terracotta block, followed by a dark liquid upside down stair, dark liquid corner stair, upside down, and then a dark liquid top slab like that to go and finish it off and bring it toward the rear. With that done, we're going to then go back up to the front here. We're going to go to our intakes. For our intakes here, we're going to place down two iron trap doors and using a debug stick. Uh, we're going to go ahead and basically open them so that they face that direction. If you do not have access to a debug stick, then I would recommend using dark oak wood trap doors or birch wood trap doors for this uh, technique. Either one will work. Uh, we would then want to go ahead and place down an iron trap door on the side of this one or a dark oak wood trap door, whichever you decide to use, and we're going to go ahead and close that as well. You can also use birch wood trap doors. Um, again, there are a few alternatives to basically the modern method that we have here. Um, anyways, once we get to this point, we're going to then grab an item frame, place our item frame on the side here with a black concrete block in the item frame and a dark liquid sign over it, like so. We're going to then place down a black concrete block, followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 blue concrete blocks back, and 1 and 2 prismarine walls directly after that. Moving into the wings here, we're going to go and grab ourselves daylight detectors, some warp slabs, some iron trap doors, some red carpet, and some blue carpet. And to get started for the wings here, we're going to go to this first trap door here. And we're going to go and grab our first daylight detector, place it down here on top of this uh, trap door here, and we're going to turn it to the night mode. We're going to go and then place down three warp stair or warp slabs back, so three. And then two daylight detectors here, back, turn to the night mode as well. We're going to go, to go to the side of the first warped slab here, place down a daylight detector, turn it to night mode, and then we're going to go ahead and also place down two warp slabs back and two daylight detectors back from those warp slabs. After that's done, go into the side here, we're going to go and grab iron trap doors, we're going to place down a row of three, or sorry, row of five of iron trap doors on those uh, five dark oak wood trap doors. We're going to go then place down a blue carpet on top of the stair, followed by a red carpet, and then two blue carpets back. And then lastly, we're just going to place down two blue carpets on the dark oak wood top slabs and, uh, and a trap door there on the side of the wing there. And that's what it should look like up above there for the wings. Once we have that all complete, uh, we're going to go and then go back here to the tail. We're going to go and skip a space off of this uh, dark oak wood upside down corner stair. And we're going to place down a dark oak wood top slab, or dark oak wood uh, trap door. We're going to go and then go back from the trap door, one and two. Trap door, save a row of three. And then to the side of the last two, we're going to place down two dark oak wood top slabs out to the side like so. We're then going to very simply grab an end rod and place down an end rod, coming off the uh, dark oak wood slab like that toward the rear. And that right there is going to finish off what we have here for this layer. Um, as you can see, this is what it looks like from up above. Don't forget that front section there, that difference that we do have on both sides. But everything else is symmetrical for this layer. Anyways, that right there is it for uh, layer number three. And with that, let's go and move into layer number four. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go and take a redstone repeater. And we're going to place it down on top of this blue concrete block. And we're going to go rotate it around so that the two notches are kind of more forward, like that, on the front there. After that's done, we're going to go and then place down a narrow brick stair after it. Coming off the front of the narrow brick stair, we're going to place down an item frame and a black bed in the item frame. Rotate with the pillow facing downwards, like so. We're going to go and then go back from this uh, narrow brick stair here. We're going to place down a row of three of light gray stained glass uh, full blocks. We're going to go and then place down a black concrete block. And then one, two, and three blue shulker boxes. We're going to go ahead and take our blue concrete, we're going to place it on a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, blue concrete blocks back, a warped uh, slab, and then a iron trapdoor there on the very end. 
After that, going back up here to the front, we're gonna go and work our way out to the sides of this uh, narrow brick stair. We're gonna place down a wither skeleton skull at a slight angle like so. We're gonna go and then take our light gray stained glass panes. We're gonna place down two panes back, a warped slab, a warped stair, and then one, two, and three blue shulker boxes. We're gonna take our blue concrete and then place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven blue concrete blocks back, and one, two, three prismarine walls, followed by a warped slab and a daylight detector turned to night mode. After that, go ahead and focus in on our horizontal stabilizers. We're going to place down a warp slab come out the side of this wall, followed by a second warp slab back, and a daylight detector again turned to night mode. We then want to place down a row of three iron trap doors on top of those three dark oak wood slabs, and we're going to go and place down two blue carpets on top of these dark oak wood top slabs. So it should look like this here for the back for the horizontal stabilizer. After that, again moving up to the front here, we're going to place down a iron trap door. On top of this one right here, going back from it, we're going to place down a daylight detector, turn to night mode, followed by a warp slab, a second warp slab, and then we're going to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 warp stairs, and then we're going to place down a skeleton skull on top of this blue concrete block, and then a skeleton skull at a slight angle on top of this prismarine wall, like so. And once we have that all done there, that is going to basically wrap it up what we have here for layer 4. Uh, and with that, we're going to go and move into our next layer, layer number 5. So before we go and move into uh, layer 5, I want to go ahead and cover one quick thing uh, I forgot to do for layer 4, and that's going to be the banners that are on the side of the aircraft here. Now, I will not be showing you guys how to do the numbered uh, banners. There are plenty of tutorials on uh, YouTube that show you guys how to actually go ahead and do those. So I will be bypassing that part. Uh, you can look up those videos for yourself or make the numbers if you know how to. But basically, you just want a blue banner. Uh, background and then a yellow uh, number to basically make those numbers and very simply I chose 17 for no specific reason you can do whatever you guys want uh, but you can see here uh, you just want to place these banners in this position right here so right before this uh, item frame here with the diamond and then we should have two space two blocks of space here to go ahead and put our flag in now to make this flag it's pretty simple we're just gonna need two pieces of white dye two cyan dye two red dye and two white banners Let's go and get started. So we're going to go and begin with by going into our loom. We're going to take our first white banner, we're going to put it into our loom, and we're going to take our red dye and put it in the loom as well. We want to go and select the red corner up in the top here, just like that. So that's going to be our first uh, part there, and we're going to go and then grab the banner. We then want to take our white dye, put it into our loom as well, and we're going to go and do the border, the white dye that goes around like this. So we get a banner that looks like that. We're going to then take our cyan die, and we're going to just do the bottom, or the lower third, uh, basically line that goes across the bottom here with our cyan die. So just like that, and that's going to make our first banner. Now for our second one, we're going to go and put our white banner into our loom, our red die, and we're going to go and do a line right across the center here of basically red. We're going to go and then take our white die, and we're going to go ahead and split the banner in half vertically, so you get a design that looks like this. And we're going to go ahead and then take our cyan die and do a line across the lower third. So just like this. And we get two banners that look just like that. Very simply for these banners, we're going to go ahead and place this banner here on this side and this banner here facing toward the front. So just like that to go ahead and make our Soviet uh, naval flag. Very simple design. Um, kind of works if you look at it. It's pretty close to it for basically the scale and what we're trying to go for. So. I uh, definitely think it's not too bad of a design, works pretty good, uh, but yeah, that's basically what we want for right there. And over here on this side, it'll be the this banner here on the black, and then this banner right there. So, uh, go ahead and put those banners on both sides there, and once you have that all done, that's going to make those two banners, and that'll pretty much be it for those banners, and with that, we're going to go and move into layer number five. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five to go and get started with here, we're going to place down an air brick slab on top of this light gray stainless block up here in the cockpit, followed by another air brick slab back, a daylight detector turned to night mode, and then an iron trap door. And that's going to do it there for your cockpit. Once that's done, we're going to go back to the tail here. We're going to go and go to the last blue concrete block uh, in the center line. We're going to place down a blue concrete block on top of it, followed by one, two, three, four blocks forward. So you have a row of five of blue concrete. We're going to go ahead and place down two blue shulker boxes, a blue concrete block, a warp slab, a second warp slab, a warp stair, which is going to be facing that direction like so and a warp slab coming off the back of the stair like so. On the side here of the slab, facing toward the front, we're going to place down an item frame, a black concrete block in the item frame, rotated to form a diamond shape, and we want to go and place down a dark liquid sign over it like so. Once that's done, the last thing we need to do here is to take iron trap doors. We're going to place down a row of iron trap doors along these four 
blue concrete blocks and we're going to go ahead and basically close these using our debug stick. If you do not have a debug stick, again, you can use birch wood trapdoors or dark oak wood, uh, basically whatever you used for down here if you are using that technique instead. Um, but that right there is going to basically finish off what we have there for layer 5. With that, we're going to move into our final layers, which are going to consist of layers 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So um, with that, let's go ahead and move into our last final layers, layers 6 through 10. Alright guys, moving into our final layers, we have layers 6 through 10. For these layers to go ahead and get started with, we're going to go to the top of this warp stair. We're going to place down a skeleton skull on top of it, fall by an end rod, come out the skeleton skull toward the rear like so. Once that's done, we're going to place down a blue carpet on top of this uh, shulker box here. And we're going to then place down an iron trap door after it, and then a daylight detector, turn to night mode like so. We then want to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, and 4, blue concrete blocks back, and a warped upside down stair like that on the very end. Uh, once we have that all done, uh, we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves a uh, stone button and we're going to place down a stone button on both sides of this blue concrete block here on the end. Going up to our next uh, column up, or our next row up, we're going to place down a blue concrete block here, red concrete block, then two blue concrete blocks back. On this first one here, we're going to place down a stone button on both sides. Going up to our next uh, row, we're going to place down a blue concrete block on top of the red concrete one, and then one and two blue concrete blocks with a stone button on both sides of this blue concrete block like so. Coming off this block, we're going to go ahead and place down a warped upside down stair, like so. After that, going ahead and going up to the next uh, row, we're going to place down a smooth quartz block, a second smooth quartz block, and then a third one like that. So you have a row of three across the top there, a end rod come off the back here, and then a smooth quartz slab on the very top. And once you have that all done there, that is going to basically complete the tail and layers 6 through 10. And with that, we have our in-flight version here for the Yak-38M complete. We're going to go ahead and now move into the version to convert it into the VTOL design. Um, so those of you that do want to have this in a VTOL configuration, you will be able to have that. So with that, let's go ahead and move on to the VTOL. Alright guys, so we're going ahead and move into turning this into the VTOL version. So to make the VTOL version real simple, we're going to be going ahead and starting off with our bottom um, thrusters. So for this, we're going to go, and go down to this section. We're going to go to the section here where this dark oak wood slab is. We're going to delete this slab and the two trapdoors in front of it. We're going to replace those blocks with uh, three mossy cobblestone walls. We're going to go over here to this side and do the same exact thing. Once that's done, we're going to go and break the three trapdoors here in the middle between the walls and then the three green terracotta blocks above it. We can also break these green terracotta blocks and in those places we can place down black concrete blocks across like so. Now we're going to go and then place down a stone brick wall here in the center followed by a dispenser like this to both sides, a dark oak wood bun on the bottom of the dispensers, an item frame on the bottom of the dispensers, and then a black concrete block in the item frames just like that. And that right there is going to make your bottom thrusters like so opened up. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and uh, move on to our top ones. All right, guys, moving into our top, uh, basically, intakes. Now, for these, uh, real simple, uh, we're going to go and go to the section where our shulker boxes are, and we're just going to go and delete this uh, 3 by 3 square here of our shulker boxes. In its place, we're going to place down an andesite stair on both sides of this section right here, followed by a black uh, concrete block there in the center, a stone button on top, an item frame, and then an iron bar in those item in that iron frame like that. We then want to go ahead and place down a polished andesite slab to both sides here, and then in the center, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick wall. So we can go ahead and grab one from right here real quick, and we're just going to place down a stone brick wall here in the center. We're going to place down there a black concrete block right here, followed by again a an andesite stair to both sides, an iron frame, and then a iron bar in the iron frame, like so. Now once we have that done, we're going to then place down a iron bar on top of these two uh, stairs here. We're going to place down a birch, or sorry, a warped slab on top of those two iron bars, and then in the space between them, we're going to place down a warped top slab. We then want to go ahead and go down from the top slab with a half slab, and then in this section here, come off the iron bars, we're going to place down a top slab of warped wood. We're going to go and then place down a top slab coming down from the slab here. So on top of this, uh, on top of this uh, item frame here. And then we're going to place down a warp slab to both sides of that top slab. On the back here, we're going to place down a warp slab in the center, a daylight detector on both sides, and turn those daylight detectors to night mode like so. And that right there is going to basically be the hatch here and these intakes that open up to basically allow propulsion here for the engines on the bottom. Now, uh, with that all out of the way, we're going to go ahead and go back to this section here, and we can go ahead and modify these engines as well to have them face downwards. Now, uh, I didn't really have a design for this at first, but I kind of thought of one that may actually work for this scenario. So for this, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to take this trap door, we're going to go ahead and delete it, and rotate it to face it this direction. We're going to go ahead and place down a trap door down from this button, 
closed like so, and a trapdoor down from here as well. Uh, after we have that done, uh, we can go and then place down an item frame here on the side of this, or we actually can't do that, so we're going to leave that space open, and we're going to go ahead and go over here and do the same thing. So we're going to have these trapdoors come down like so, and make sure we delete the trapdoor right here as well. So you have your engines, you have them facing downwards. Space in the middle here, um, kind of a difficult spot, we don't really have the best of basically capabilities to deal with that, but uh, to kind of deal with it the best we can, we can go and place down a mossy cobblestone wall there in the center. But uh, basically those engines would be facing downwards and those would pr provide thrust to kind of push it off the ground. So you can see here we have our VTOL versions for both. Uh, you have the engines facing down here and these uh, thrusters here and the intakes. And that right there is it for the VTOL version and let's go ahead and move on to the landing gear. Alright guys, going ahead and moving into our landing gear. Now landing gear here we're going to be putting on our VTOL version. It doesn't really matter which one you put it on. Um, so you can put this on the, the uh, one without VTOL, just really doesn't matter, um, either one will work. So to begin with, we're going to be going ahead and go into this section down here. We're going to go and delete this trap door, followed by the next three, four, or one, two, and three. So you have a row of four here, broken out like so. We're going to place tiny dark liquid stair, coming down from this green terracotta block here. This section here, we're going to go and delete this block up here, place down a upside down diorite stair, and then we're going to place down a diorite top slab. Uh, coming off the stair, and then right here we're going to place down a diorite full block. On the bottom of this full block of diorite, we're going to place down a lever, face it forward like so, make sure you fix any trap doors that do open, and we're going to then place down a uh, polished diorite top slab coming off the lever. When we get to this section, we're going to place down a diorite wall right here, followed by an upside down diorite stair, a lever on the back of the stair, a block of coal on the bottom of the stair, and then on both sides of the stair as well, we're going to go and place down a skeleton skull like so. And once we have that done, for the doors that would open up, we're going to go and place down a dark liquid slab where this trap door is, followed by a second and a third um, uh, slab back, and we're going to then replace these two slabs, or put on the sides of these two slabs with dark liquid signs. Same thing over here. So one, two, three slabs, and then two signs on the first two slabs toward the front, like that. After that's all done, uh, we can go ahead and then grab ourselves a green banner and black dye and a loom and we're going to go and make a nice banner design here for the wheels I do definitely like the design for this I think it looks really good for what uh, you know we're trying to go for with a wheel here um, again it's kind of an optional design you can use the traditional stone button wheel designs if you do prefer um, really kind of up to preference some people like it some people don't so it's kind of you know up to you but to make this wheel design here real simple we're going to go and grab our loom put our green banner in the loom and our black dye uh, we're going to go and then place down a border, go black, around the banner. And we would go, want to go and then also grab ourselves a second piece of dye, which I forgot to do. We're going to place our green banner back in our loom, black dye, and we're going to go and do a line across the center. And then we can go and then just simply take this green banner, place it on both sides of this black concrete block, and you have a nice uh, kind of wheel design there for the front wheel. That right there is it for the front wheel. Let's go ahead and move on to the rear ones. All right, guys, and go ahead and now moving into the rear landing gear. So the rear landing gear here, real simple. We're going to be going ahead and going back to this section here. We want to go ahead and go to this section right after this uh, green terracotta block with the uh, item frame on it. We're going to go ahead and delete these two green terracotta blocks and then this dark liquid stair. In its place, we're going to go ahead and replace these two green terracotta blocks with polished diorite, iron trap door, on top of those two blue concrete blocks to both sides, and then a polished diorite stair there in the middle. Coming down from this stair, we're going to place down a diorite wall. We want to go and then skip a space, and then we're going to place down a diorite top slab. In this space here, we're going to place down an anvil. Now coming off the side of this slab here, we're going to place down a narrow brick upside down stair, narrow brick stair on top of that stair, and then two stairs along the back there, like that, to go in and basically form our wheel. We also want to go ahead and go to the inside here, and for our uh, landing gear doors, we're going to go ahead and place this um, dark liquid trap door with an upside down stair and this dark liquid slab with an upside down stair. On the bottom of these stairs, we're going to go ahead and place down two dark liquid top slabs like so. And right there is going to basically complete our rear wheel. The last thing we need to do for it is to just go ahead and do a narrow banner uh, type wheel design. So for this, real simply, uh, we want to go in this time grab ourselves a black banner. So just like that, we're going to go ahead and then need to grab ourselves some green dye. And we'll need two green dye, and we're gonna go ahead and then need uh, four black dye. And we also can go ahead and grab ourselves a second black banner as well. Now, with our loom, uh, which we'll grab, 
uh, we're going to go and basically make a wheel design here for the back wheel. So very simple, we're going to go into our loom, place our black banner, place our green die. For these banners here, we're going to go and do one line on the left side, and then one line over here on the right side. And that's going to be our first two banners. We're going to go and put each banner back into the loom, and we're going to go and then do the upper third, split across the top there, and then also the lower third. So you're going to get a design that looks like this. Same thing here for this banner. So upper third and lower third. And that's going to make these two banner designs. And real simply, you're just going to go ahead and go to the side of the wheel here and place down the two banners. Also on the inside section here, we can put this one banner as well. We're going to place down the banner like so. And that right there is going to basically do it for our landing gear. And with that, that's going to complete all three versions here for the Yak uh, 38M that we have for this tutorial. Anyways, hope you guys do enjoy this build and are able to put it to good use. You have a definitely uh, quite a few different variants and different formations you can put this in. So hopefully you guys do enjoy it. If you guys do end up using this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This would be the thing from a sign of the build, link to my channel or this video if this does appear in social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for the build, you're free. If I a project so you guys are working on, overall enjoy the build, have fun, fun, and all that fun stuff. Uh, but other than that, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, a big thanks to Patreon supporter Transfer8 for making this tutorial possible. And feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. And with that, that's going to do for this video. Thank you guys all again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been your 204, and I'll see you guys next time.